Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today we're going to continue on with our basic tutorial for Gary Grigsby's War in the West. And currently we're covering the Air War in this game, which was quite a change uh, from the original War in the East. When War in the West came out, they decided to completely redo the Air War. And so there's a whole planning, air planning, and air execution phase that happens each turn before there's any ground uh, phase where you move your ground units around. So the air war has its own two phases, one which you control, the air planning, so you set everything up. Then you hit next phase, uh, this F12 button up here, and it executes all of those orders, or in the air war, what are called directives, okay? So air directives, and think of directives as big general overall orders. You are not going to be giving air units their own individual missions. Rather, you're going to give them big overall objectives, and they're going to go try it. The AI is going to give the game or give your units uh, missions, individual missions, to go out and try to accomplish those objectives. Okay, so I think that causes some confusion with people because this is somewhat a manually controlled system. And it's somewhat an AI controlled system and they sort of work together and you can give the AI all of the control or you can take, I would say about half or three quarters of the control back yourself. Like I said, you're not going to be doing individual mission uh, direct, you know, you're not going to tell each individual plane what to do each turn you give these big overall orders okay so we're in the air planning phase i am in the introductory scenario air campaign because that's probably the best way to show it now as you might remember last time we went through the different command structures essentially the u.s has two different uh, high air commands over here and the brits have uh, three or four, um, plus kind of just a big overall air command. So we went through the air commands last time. We talked about the different air bases. You can see them on the map here. Green if there are planes on them, red if there are not, uh, and also the size of the air base uh, based on this representation. It's out on the map. This is a size one airfield. This is a size three. That's a size two. So you can always kind of get an idea of, you know, how many aircraft you could put on that airfield. Now, remember, it's all based on the number of engines uh, that are going to be stationed there, not the actual number of aircraft. Uh, if they're four engine aircraft, you can put fewer there just makes sense. Right. All right. So this time we're going to go through sort of. What what it's going to be like if you give the AI complete control for the most part of your air war. And when you start the game, the first thing that will pop up if you have it selected in your options is the automatic air directive creation screen. Now, this changed in War in the East 2. And the only reason I'm pointing these kind of things out is there's so many of you on the channel that have played War in the East 1, you've played War in the East 2, you've played War in the Pacific, uh, because we play a lot of that here on the channel. And so I just want to point out the differences, I guess. In War in the East 2, there is a button that's kind of, you know, AI handle the air war. And it doesn't have this screen, and I actually find this screen quite useful if, even if you want to turn the entire air war over to the AI for the most part, you can still give it kind of big overall ideas about what you want it to do. All right, so what is this screen? This will pop up automatically, like I said, if you choose that in your options, uh, you can see it right down here. Show the screen at the start of turn. I have that turned on yes. I would recommend you always do that. Even if you're not using that, it can pop up. Who knows, you may change your mind. You may want to do something different uh, one turn or another turn. You can always have this pop up and immediately get rid of it if you want to. Okay, so what is this? This is basically just a form that you fill out to say, hey AI, I not only want you to give the game specific missions, this is how I want you to do it or what I want you to prioritize, okay? 
And what do we see here? Tactical Air North Europe, Tactical Air Mediterranean, Strategic Air Day, Strategic Air Night. All right, let's get the pencil out. All right. Basically, in the air war in this game, you have two different kinds of bombing. You have tactical and you have strategic. In a big general sense, tactical bombing is going to be bombing of units interdicting units, doing things on a smaller scale, closer to the front line, um, that is tactical, okay? Strategic, on the other hand, is the big B-17 fortresses, those massive planes flying across the Atlantic, you know, across the English Channel to go bomb the German infrastructure. So you want it to bomb railways, rail yards, you want it to, you know, bomb production facilities or oil facilities. That's strategic. To ta tactical, on the other hand, again, is get trying to get air superiority, trying to keep German units from making it from reserves to the front, um, you know, stopping that one unit from reinforcing a place you're trying to attack. That is tactical bombing. And when you think of air, the air war in general, it's really kind of uh, thought of or based on how you're bombing. Because if you think of fighter planes, what are they up there to do? In most cases, they're up there to pr either protect the bombers or to attack bombers, the other side's bombers. And so, you know, fighters are more kind of supplementary type aircraft. Now, you can run individual missions just with them where they're trying to get air superiority over uh, an area of the map so that any German, you know, if you're playing the Allies, any German aircraft that tries to stray into that territory you're going to, uh, you know, try to destroy that so that you have air superiority there. But ultimately, that's because you're trying to either get your bombers in there to destroy men and equipment on the other side, or you're trying to keep the Germans from bringing their bombers in to destroy your equipment. All right, it's all based about, you know, about bombers, really, uh, even though you have obviously a lot of fighters. Um, okay, so tactical We've talked about that. That's kind of your shorter range bombing missions, trying to interdict, trying to stop troops. Well, we'll go through them all here. There are two different places you could do that in this game. You can do it in Northern Europe, all right? Or you could do what the game calls the Mediterranean theater. Now that would be North Africa, Italy, Mediterranean, all right? So it gives you kind of two different places and you can set different priorities based on what you want to do differently in the two different theaters of operation. When the Allies attacked the Germans in Europe, they started off by going across to Sicily, out of North Africa, across to Sicily, and then into Italy. That was one front. It's probably the front that's talked about the least in World War II, but it was actually quite important both to take pressure off of the Soviets in the east and to allow the eventual landings at Normandy because the Germans had to shift a lot of assets down into Italy once the Italians essentially crumbled. Okay, so you have Northern Europe. You know, that's where the Germans up in, in France, uh, Belgium, it, in the Netherlands, etc. Or down in the Mediterranean, Italy. You know, you start in North Africa, you eventually make it to Sicily and then to Italy. So you have these two different theaters and you can give your uh, different air assets uh, different priorities based on what you're doing down there. Are you attacking more in the Mediterranean? Maybe. Are you attacking more in Northern Europe? Are there certain things you'd rather try to destroy up there? Okay, you get the idea. Also under tactical is something called amphib support, North and South. Now there were two, well, let's say three major landings on the Western Front in World War II. There was the landing on Sicily, the landing in Italy, and the landing in Normandy, all right? Well, if you're going across the English Channel, that's amphib support north. What are you doing? Now, right now, we have that turned off 
okay, we're not planning an amphibious assault, evidently, across to Normandy at this time. If we were, if we're putting troops on transports, uh, we're having paratroopers go, you know, land in France or, you know, the Netherlands or Belgium, wherever you decide to have your troops land, if you're doing that, you want to turn this on and the game will then do tactical missions that help support that landing. Same thing when the, in the south. If you're getting ready to land troops in Sicily or Italy, you want to turn this on so the game automatically creates air missions to support that. All right? Um, before we go back into tactical, let's just talk about strategic air day, strategic air night. The Allies ran you know, uh, an incredible number of strategic bombing missions as the war wore on to try to decimate the German uh, production facilities, the oil facilities, uh, and eventually the population, let's be honest. Um, and generally, the Americans ran the day missions and the Brits ran the night missions. Now, you could have some Americans run you know, at night, some Brits run during the day, but that's kind of the breakdown, and that's how it was historical. So you have day and you have night. Now, you may want to do different things. You may imagine, uh, you know, anti-air is probably going to be more accurate during the day. They can actually see. It's not as if they had great radar at the time or anything. So if they can see the planes, they could probably hit them better for instance, so that may, you may want to change your mix of what you're bombing based on how many things you start to lose from, you know, anti-aircraft. Uh, there just may be, you know, you think, hey, I think the British bombers are hitting oil facilities better. So maybe you want to do that at night, okay? So anyway, we'll get back to that. I really just wanted to draw day and night. So for tactical, you're, it's a, a geographic difference. Uh, for strategic, it's a day or night, time of day difference. So let's get off this, all right, and let's get over here to Tactical Air North Europe. Okay, ground support. Now there are approximately, well, let's just go look. We'll come back to the screen. There are, what, six different air missions you can run in this game or tell the game to run. Now, you don't actually do the specific missions or set them up. You give big overall directives for that to be done. What are those? Well, the first one is ground support. So when you get to the air planning stage, you've got this second row of buttons down here. These are the air buttons. These will not appear during the ground air only one of them does, but these will not appear during the ground portion of your turn. These are only air buttons and they tell you the different directives you can give. You see here, ground support air directive. Okay. Then we have ground attack air directive. Then we have strategic bomb air directive, air recon directive, air superiority directive, and naval patrol air directive. So these are the six different directives that can be given in the game and you can either do that through giving the AI the guidance of what kinds of of directives you want here or you could do it manually and we'll be doing that in an upcoming episode um, but those are the six I mean that's it so when you think about your air what could they be out there doing they could be doing ground support ground attack strategic recon, air superiority, or naval. That's it. Those are the six. That's all you've got to remember are those six uh, different big overall directives. Okay, what are they? What is ground support? Ground support means uh, you are going to be providing support to your ground forces when they are either attacking or defending. So the game is going to try to send out bombers and escort fighters with those bombers to support your attacks when you're trying to attack German units. Or if you're getting attacked, they can also fly out there, bomb the enemy, and blunt their attack, make it not as effective, or when you're attacking, you can make your attack more effective. Um, so that is ground support. Meanwhile, ground attack, so sometimes people get these confused, ground attack goes more to you're going out and offensively bombing something specific, okay? So ground support is more of a general 
idea, which is if there's a battle taking place, you're going to send bombers and escort fighters to protect those bombers out there to try to hurt the enemy forces. Ground attack is more, I'm going to try to bomb uh, your airfield, your town, your railroad, your uh, unit. You can do it on specific units, but it doesn't have to be units that are directly involved in a battle, okay? And so ground attack is a more specific, I'm going to go hit a certain thing, all right? Ground support is more general. I'm going to, I want a directive out there that if I get attacked, I want bombers to go out there and help my ground forces. And so uh, think of ground support as a general one, ground attack as a specific bombing mission, okay? Strategic kind of speaks for itself. This is when you're going to go to try to hit infrastructure, the German infrastructure. That's strategic. Recon, that kind of speaks for itself as well. You're going to go out here and try to determine where are their German units? Where are their German production facilities? Where are their oil facilities? And there are detection levels in this game or recon levels based on how many times you've flown over something, how good of information that you have. All right, so that's recon. And then you have air superiority, which we already kind of talked about, where you're going to take a section of the map and say, this is mine in the air. I have superiority here. You fly in here, we're going to shoot you down, um, and we're just going to fly over this area and try to get air superiority. The final one is naval. Now, naval is a little different. We may spend, you know, 10 or 15 minutes doing nothing but talking about naval at some point because it's handled a little differently in this game and quite honestly will happen automatically if you do nothing. Uh, the AI is set up to go ahead and do these naval patrols. Uh, but we'll kind of talk about that, you know, in its own section. I don't want to get lost in the weeds there because we could probably talk about that forever. Uh, <laughs> I could say that about all these, uh, but I'm just trying to give a higher level overview. So those are the six. All right, so how do you go about doing that? Well, you can let the AI do it and give it certain instructions here. OK, um, you could also just hit AI manage air units and bases, but we'll get to that. That's kind of a different topic. Um, let's just talk about the different directives. So let's say tactical air North Europe. So up here in Northern Europe, over France, over Belgium, over the Netherlands, um, what do we want to do? Well, let's say we really want to support our ground forces. OK, excellent. Let's also say we really want to get air superiority, okay? What are these? This is none, low, medium, high. All you're doing is giving this priority now, or priorities. Now, uh, don't, I guess one way to think about this is, is don't put everything on high. Uh, essentially, you're giving it no priorities when you do that. So if you have everything on low ev or everything on high, it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole system, right? Because you're not giving the game any priorities at all. Let's say that we really, really want air superiority over Northern Europe. Why is that? Well, we want to get out there. We want to shoot down all Luftwaffe fighters that we can so our bombers can go in there unimpeded right? We want our bombers to be able to get over there to Northern Europe, do their bombing missions uh, with no enemy fighters, all right? So maybe we want high air superiority, okay? So these are your big general types. Now, I talked about ground support being a general type of directive. So is air superiority, really? I mean, because it's nothing specific. You're not saying, I want you to go do X. What you're saying is, I want you to control this whole territory. If the Germans don't send any Luftwaffe over to that area, it could be the, these fighters do nothing. You know, they go up and buzz around, but there's really nothing for them to do because uh, the Germans aren't even um, coming after you or trying to, uh, you know, uh, try to get rid of your air superiority. So your fighters may just sit on the ground most of the time because why not? Um, so these are big general orders or directives, ground support, air superiority. Ground attack, now we talked about ground attack. Here's your specific stuff. Here's your specific tactical bombing, okay? I want the game to go out and bomb German airfields high, okay? I want it to go, uh, go 
um, attack specific units high okay railways ports ferries what are ferries that's when you just have one hex between land and there's a little uh, diamond that shows a ferry that you can cross over it's a more important way up here in northern europe uh, obviously interdiction what is that well i want german units not to be able to move about the map easily so i'm going to interdict them when they go into hexes it's almost like a landmine going off they will get bombed now one of the things you got to get your arms around in this game is they are one week turns right and so you can't very easily as the developer you couldn't model it where every time a german unit moves a bombing mission goes and takes place although theoretically that's kind of what's going on when you pick interdiction you're putting down markers so let's just say this hex if we do an interdiction bombing run in this hex it'll put down a marker in this hex that the germans can't see and if they cross through in that hex it replicates as if or it it uh, models as if they had been bombed during their move okay so don't be confused by interdiction we'll go into it we'll go talk about it we'll do some interdiction missions and directives or directives the game will set the missions um but don't be confused by that because ultimately all interdiction means is it's a way the game is bombing units without doing it every single time a German unit moves, all right? So these are your specific ground attack directives that will be set up. And what is it that you want to prioritize with your tactical bombing? Maybe none of them. Maybe all you want to do is do the big general ground support, the big general air superiority, and you say, you know what, I, there's nothing, I don't want to go after specific rail yards or s specific units as they move or, you know, ports as they move. All right. So these are the gen big general ones. These are the more specific ground tactical bombing. Okay. Um, and it's in tactical air North Europe or tactical air Mediterranean. And you see, you can make the exact same decisions down in the Mediterranean theater. All right. We already talked about uh, amphib support. You're going to just want to turn this on anytime you're about to run. Now we can't do it. I don't think think oh there we go okay yeah sure you can do it there we go when you turn this on it gives you a specific menu of preset items here all right it's going to interdict enemy units why is that because as you land on the coast the germans are going to try to get down on the coast you want to bomb them as they move towards the coast all right uh railways you don't want them to be able to rail in you want to set air superiority why is that why do you want that to be on high well because the germans are going to try to bomb your transports so you want to blow their fighters or bombers out of the sky that are trying to hit your transports as you bring troops over and you do get a low amount of ground support because as you land you want uh, some ground support as you attack from your bombers uh, and their escort fighters so this just sets that up now let's go to amphib support north same thing it's going to give you kind of a preset idea now maybe you don't agree with these and you say you know what interdiction i don't want it to be high i want it to be medium okay I mean, you can do that if you want. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, same idea here. Ground support, air superiority, the big general categories, and then you have the specific things you can bomb on a ground attack. Down here, if you're doing an amphibious invasion, you uh, want these turned on. We'll turn, them, turn it off in the north. We'll turn it on in the south so we can go and look at that. Now, you do have set all priorities to none. If you want to just start with a completely clean slate, uh, every turn you can do that. Also, let's just say that you have completely overrun the Germans down in Italy. You don't need any more tactical air Mediterranean. You can turn that off. And even though these things are selected, it will not create directives, actual directives based on these choices. You can just turn it off. Same idea if you don't want to do strategic bombing at night. You could turn that off, or if you didn't want to do it during the day, you can turn that off. And none of this is applicable when it creates its air directives. Okay? Um, strategic air. This is the big bombing campaigns, the big massive bombers going over to Germany, firebombing Dresden, hitting Berlin, uh, you know, going after oil storage, going after the big rail yards. 
and you can see city target types so this is going to be hitting cities that's what it does uh afvs what are those armored fighting vehicles so this is like tanks okay where they produce their tanks you could give that a high priority. I don't want any more Panzers coming off the lines. Let's try to bomb all their production that's doing AFVs, where they produce aircraft, where they have ports or rail yards, where they're getting their manpower from. So, I mean, that really is like firebombing, right? You're trying to hurt their manpower, meaning kill people that could eventually end up in the army. Uh, resources, just kind of a big general resource there. Oil fuel, heavy industry, vehicles, armaments, V weapons, whoa, okay, U boats. You can go give priority to any of these things. You'll see, and you see here when the game starts, what's the high priority that the game is telling you you should go after? Oil and fuel, oil and fuel, bomb that like crazy. If you're doing a ground attack invasion, okay, the strategic bombers can also help with that. Ground attack north, ground attack south. So it's just like this. Uh, it's not, no, I'm sorry. It's not like ground support, really. This is where you're going to be doing specific attacks. So it is like the ground attack types. Strategic bombers can do that as well. Now, you generally think of them as the big bombers going to bomb the cities. But if you do, so you can see, these are the exact same choices here. Airfields, units, railways, ports, ferries, interdiction, and rail yards. No different than the tactical bombing. Now, normally you would think of tactical bombers having a shorter range. You think of strategic bombers having a much larger range. Maybe you don't want some reinforcements coming in from Germany, so you put these all put this all on units. You know, I want strategic bombers to hit units, and then you give a priority in both the north and the south. You could call this Mediterranean if you want. Um, of how much priority you're gonna give these ground attacks. I mean, do you want them doing this or do you want them doing this stuff? Exact same idea at night. The game will only run bombers at night that are okay to run at night. Uh, the Brits, you know, very early, relatively speaking, got comfortable flying at night. Uh, it was not easy to do in this time period to fly at night, but they got comfortable with it. As you can see here, night bombing generally entailed bombing cities to destroy people. Uh, you know, that's just how it was. Um, and so the game sets it up automatically for high for manpower to start with. Uh, ground attack in the north, you're going to have those night bombers hitting uh you know, specific rail yards at night. So you've got it in the north, high priority rail yards. So essentially these night bombers are gonna hit manpower and they're gonna hit rail yards. Uh, during the day, it's gonna be oil and fuel. You're gonna have them attack both in the north and the south for some, what you would kind of call tactical bombing of airfields, units, rail yards, okay, and a little bit of the railways to keep freight from coming out to German troops. All right, so once you have all of this, you know, kind of the way you want it, or maybe you just go with what the game already has, you can click this button that says set air directives, okay? You click that, assign new air directives, Yes, and the game will automatically do your error directives. Now you can change these, okay? You can go in manually and change them. But if you do, and then you hit this again, all of your work is lost. So, you know, hit this at the start of the turn or after you fill out the menu. Um, and then if you want to go in and do it manually, you can mess around with what the game, I say mess around, you can go modify what the game set up as air directives. Uh, but, you know, ultimately make sure if you're going to do that, you hit this button first. So the game sets them up. Now that hasn't done anything. You're still planning. It sets them up, but you're still in the planning phase. Nothing happens until you hit execute. All right, so we've set air directives. We hit on that based on our menu of choices. Let's go look at the summary. And the summary will tell you exactly what the game has set up. RAF fighter command. Now remember, we talked about these different commands last time, right? There's fighter command, there's bomber command. I think there was na there were four Brits. Uh, we could go look, but I'm not gonna take the time to do it. Just see the last episode. 
Um, RAF Fighter Command under Roderick Hill is going to try to run air superiority. All right. It's got a target hex and it's got an area that's going to be three hexes all around this target hex. It's going to try to do air superiority and we'll go and look at this on the map in a moment. It's going to fly at an altitude of 25,000 feet. Okay, you may say, well, I don't know what altitude to fly these at. My recommendation is generally keep what the game, what the AI sets up for you, uh, because it's going to be optimized. And if you, unless you've played a lot of like War in the Pacific or you just know a lot about air warfare over Europe, just kind of leave these altitudes as they are. I will show you how to go change those and to change them when it automatically creates them, but we'll do that later. Um, when is it going to fly? Day, both. It's going to do both. Okay, it's going to do day and night for some of them. Uh, groups, auto, which means the game is automatically going to pick the air groups that fly. Fair, you only want the, this to fly in fair or better weather. Okay, uh, and then this is a, a summary screen after we execute these that will tell you how many sorties they ran, how many planes were lost, how many were damaged, how many enemy planes were damaged. So this is just like results right here, okay? Execution detail, this means it's the game is going to show you all of the missions it runs. I always keep this on because I like to watch them run. Uh, you don't have to. You can put none. And then it's not going to show you any of the air superiority missions the game um, runs out of. What is this? s base? Uh, Tangmere, this is the staging base, but again, we'll get into all of this stuff a lot more when we go into manual creation. For now, the thing to know is you picked your priorities on the menu, and these are the directives the game has set up to carry out those priorities. So on the top, you have priorities. You set those, okay? Uh, you, <laughs> sure. Uh, so you do priorities, all right? Then there are air directives, and the AI could do that, or you could skip this. You could skip setting the priorities, and you could set these, or you can have the AI do the initial ones, which we've done here, and then you modify them manually if you want to. So there's three different ways to do these directives. All AI set on your priorities, all right? You can set them up manually, or you can have the AI set them up manual, or have the AI set them up based on your priorities, and then you go in and modify them, all right? And then out of all of this, no matter how you do it, the game, the AI is gonna do the individual missions to carry out these directives. So that's always gonna be the AI. You can't do specific missions. You couldn't go in here and say, I want this bomber, this one bomber, or this one bomber group to go bomb right here. It's all gonna be based on directives. So, you know, you're always giving some amount of control over to the AI. All right, let's get off the drawing. So RAF Fighter Command is gonna do air superiority. Okay, RAF Bomber Command is going to do ground attacks. Okay, interesting. I guess we'd have to go see what it's going to go after. Uh, it's going to do ground attacks. It's going to bomb a city. It's going to bomb cities. Those are so you can have multiple directives that are the same. So, you know, you don't have to just have one bomb city directive. Uh, you could have multiple. You can have up to as many as uh, this uh, general, air general, as many as he can uh, do. So he could do a max AD or air directives of six. He can do up to six air directives. So can this guy, six air directives. And so here he's only got four. So we've given him ground attack, or the AI is set up ground attack uh, out of this staging base at that altitude. Okay, and to this hex. Again, we'll go look at the map here in a minute. Bomb city, bomb city. Now, as you'll see, the, the, 
the RAF Fighter Command is getting superiority during the day or trying to, the RAF Bomber Command, and this is what I was saying, the Brits run at night. They generally do their bombing missions at night. Now, it doesn't have to be that way. You can set up RAF Bomber Command to only run during the day if you want to, but this is how historically it happened, and so the game uh, tries to follow that. So we've got you know, ground attack and three bomb cities. Then you have the 8th U.S. Air Force, okay. Uh, the U.S. air components are not split out like the Brits are. So, like, all the fighters for the Brits are in the RAF Fighter Command. All of the bombers are in the RAF Bomber Command. For the U.S., there's a mixture, okay. So, 8th U.S. Force has some fighters, some bombers, um, the 15th has some fighters, some bombers. Now, in this game, there are four different kinds of aircraft. There are fighters, there are bombers, there are recon, and there are transport planes. Now, you do have some special things, like you have fighter bombers that can do one or the other based on how they're trained, okay? But generally speaking, there are four different kinds, fighters, bombers, Recon transport, okay? Those are your four different kinds of planes uh, as a big overall general sense, right? You do have specific plane types, obviously, in this game. Spitfires, you know, you've got Spitfires or you've got Typhoons or you've got, you know, the different American Mustangs, all the different American aircraft. So, I mean, the game does model it down to those specific aircraft. I'm just saying in a big general sense, you've got fighters, bombers, recon, transport, okay? Uh, 8th U.S. Air Force is going to do ground attacks, they're going to bomb city, bomb city, and they're going to do some strat recon, meaning strategic recon. This is more of the long distance flying out over cities type recon. Uh, the, both the Americans and the British have planes that can go, you know, uh, damn near a thousand, probably over a thousand miles. All right. So they've got these strat recon. Uh, 15th Air Force is going to do ground attack, bomb city, bomb city, strat recon. Okay. Um, now you, if you did not like these, you can go back here, you could change your priorities around, all right? And then you could say, set air directives again, and it'll make up all new ones. So you could just change like one thing, we could put ports on low, it would give you all new directives, all right? Now then, let's go then, uh, where do I want to go next? Um... Let's go back to that for a second. We'll go look at the summary again, okay? And I want to show you, oh, whoops. I want to show you what else you can do here. AI manage air, all right? What is this? Use the AI to move and manage your air units and bases, okay? So we talked about last time all of your aircraft out here, and you can see we have aircraft where it's green, we don't have aircraft where it's red. Now you can automatically, or I say automatically, you can manually move those aircraft to different bases. So let's say once we attack Northern Europe, you can start moving aircraft over here to these bases as we take them over. And you may wanna do that manually, or you may not. Now, if you do wanna do it manually, it's this F10 button. And we will get into this when we talk about manually operating your air forces. But let's say you don't wanna do that. Let's say, you know what, that's just too much micromanagement for me. You can click on this, AI move and manage air units and bases. It's gonna to try to move your air units around to bases where it thinks it's the best or most efficient use of those air groups. So you'd hit yes, and it'll move them all around for you, all right? So maybe you just completely want to turn that over to the computer. Now, be aware, anytime you hit AI Manage and you've done anything manually before that, the game will overwrite it and do whatever the heck it wants to do, all right? Okay, so let's go actually out to the map. Um, we, there are our air directives, so if you don't want to go back to... Here are the two different screens where you can see your air directives. This is automatic air cre creation here. This is where you pick your priorities. Once your priorities have been picked, or if you don't want to do uh, 
your priorities, you go to error directives. These are the error directives the game's going to run. Now, when you go to this, you can check or uncheck it. So let's say there's a turn that you say, man, my fighters are getting chewed up. I don't really want my uh, fighters to go back out there this turn, just for this turn. You can do that. Or let's say that you look at the situation and say, I no longer need air superiority there. You can get rid of it. I don't want to bomb the city this turn or do that directive this turn, okay, uh, into cleave. Or maybe you do, or maybe you just say, I don't want to do that one anymore. You can exit out, get rid of it. That's all manual control. Again, we'll get back into it. If you do something you don't want to do, uh, or you, you change something you didn't want to change, you can always come back as long as you're still in planning and go to the automatic creation and say, okay, set my error directives based on my priorities. And it will set them all up again. Um, I would tell you, AI manage error, if you're going to have the game do this, I would do this. Well, that's a good question, actually. I guess I, I usually do the directives first, and then I let the AI kind of move my air groups around where it thinks it needs them to carry out the directives it sets up based on my priorities. Now, again, if you're ready for it to do it, execute this is going to put you in the execution the air execution phase and then it's all out of your hands the game will just start running those directives running individual missions based on the directives that are set up okay let's back out of here a little bit um so we have the automatic error creation we have the ai and this you can also so we can set ai manage error on that screen or you can do it right here. And if you click that, AI move, manage, error units and bases, you could have it, you could do it right here. Those are those screens. This is just show battles. So let's kind of forget about this because it's not really error specific. This, you, this is always here, this button. You can go see where the battles took place this turn or in the past. All right. Toggle error execution phase detail. This is just how detailed you want the game to be when it runs its error missions, how much information it gives you. That's all that is. What's the next button? Error directive summary. This is that exact same screen again. Here's your error directives. You can even, even go back to the priority creation, error directive creation screen. Okay, so a lot of these things really show up two or three times. F10, we already talked about. This is where you would move your air groups to different bases yourself manually. We'll do that next episode. Then you get into your air directives, your actual air directives. And this is how you're going to set them manually, all right? But let's just click on one here. This is ground support. Well, maybe that's not the best one to show. Um, what I want to do, let's click off of that and let's get uh, show air. Oh, let's just talk about this really quickly. Show air recon levels. Green means you have great air recon. And if you click or if you sit over the hex, it will tell you how much recon you have if you have any. Uh, in this case, we don't have any. That's why it's all, all purple. It's the start of the scenario. So we have no air, we have no idea. Um, as you get more recon on these areas, now it's showing you how many aircraft potentially they have here, but you don't know really what types um, until you run that recon. Um, as you run that recon, this dark purple starts to get lighter and lighter as you know more. Okay, um, this button up here, show interdiction levels. Now we talked about bombing interdiction, so let's uh, talk about ground attacks. Ground attacks, let's say if you bomb this hex with interdiction, so you give it the directive of interdiction and the game flies missions and bombs this, any time a German unit comes through this hex, it may suffer damage, it may lose movement points, it uh, could get some attrition because it's replicating or uh, recreating as if you are bombing that unit as it moves through here, okay? That's interdiction. So up here, as we go through, you know, this specific air buttons, this shows you interdiction levels in each hex. Now we haven't bombed at all, so we don't know what our interdiction levels are out here yet. 
right? Or Well, there are none uh, until we bomb into these specific hexes. Now, here comes a very important one. Share, show air directive targets, okay? This is the map. This shows you those air directives that are on the air directive screen. So there's the air directive summary. Let's go to that really fast. These air directives, what specific missions or what does that mean for the game? Well, you can see them in these boxes. You can see the different missions. Ground attack by the 8th U.S. Air Force. Okay. Recon by the 9th U.S. Air Force. You can see right there. Uh, as you float over these superiority and it's going to do superiority within this box and you may be just scratching your head now and saying that's so complicated it's really not when we go set these up manually i'll show you how easy it really is and once you get used to it you're going to say oh okay that's not that bad so you can see uh for ninth u.s air force uh we've got ground attack we've got superiority We've got ground attack here, uh, but we're going to get into all of that next time. Uh, you can see we've got Bomb City here out of the south. So the, I think it's the 15th U.S. that's down here. Uh, let's see if we get in here close. I think this is the 15th U.S. Uh, yeah, 15th U.S. Air Force. You can see it right down there. This is the command. It's running everything out of San Severo. Okay, it's going to bomb cities up here in Hungary, uh, in Germany itself. It's gone bomb city. We remember the directive Strat Recon. That's what that is. We've got bomb city here. Uh, this is a lot of the British bomber, uh, air, the RAF bombers. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get into all of that next time. But that's these are all the specific air buttons. Okay, if you want to do absolutely nothing to do with the air war although i can tell you i would say don't do that because <laughs> the war in the west is really about air you know if you're interested in this theater of warfare just get to know these systems and as you see them more and more and as we go through the next episode and the episode after that i think it's going to become a lot clearer to you how this all works but if you did want to do nothing you can go here you could give your basic priorities okay or you could just run with what the game has in here you can click set air directives and ai manage air done hit you do those two hit execute that's it that's all you have to do if you want the ai to completely manage your air war if you want to get a little more into it you can go out of here and really think about your priorities in each theater for tactical or day or night for strategic bombing and you could do that if you have an amphibious uh, landing that's going to happen you can turn on in the north or you can turn on in the south as a matter of fact did it set those up i think it did and i think that's what these are ground attack air superiority ground attack it's doing that preparing for a landing now we will be setting targets with our amphibious units of where we would land and then it would try to run them over those targets but we'll get into that obviously that's a little more advanced but for right now based on what our priorities were that we put in here in the automatic air uh directive creation this is the directives the game is set up but we could always change those and we could come in right here we could click on that and we can move it uh, but we'll get into all of that next time we could get rid of this we could move it we can make this box bigger or smaller uh, we could have it target other things uh, all for next time. So thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully this is being, you know, this is very helpful for you. Uh, heck, every time I talk about this, I learned something. It seems incredibly complex. It actually is not. Once you get used to it, it's a pretty intuitive system, but we'll do more and more of it. So you get more and more used to it and you can get your arms around it. So anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I will talk to you next time. Have a good one.